Okay. okay. So this is based on the Infinite Conversation by uh, Maurice Blanchot, written in 1969. It uh, comes from a dialogue at the beginning of the book. In the original book, uh, there's lots of prose in, interspersed between the dialogue sections. I, I took those out, and then I had to make a decision about how many characters uh, would be speaking the lines and who would be speaking which lines. So uh, that was just my decision. Forgive me for having asked you to come to see me. I had something to say to you. But at present I feel so weary that I'm afraid I will be unable to express myself. You are feeling very weary. Yes, weary. And this, this came upon you suddenly? To tell the truth, no. And if I even took the liberty of calling you, it was because of this weariness. Because it seemed to me that it would facilitate the conversation. I was even entirely sure of this, and still now I am almost sure of it. Only I had not realized that what weariness makes possible, weariness makes difficult. And if you were not as weary as you say you are, what would you say to me? Yes. What would I say to you? Yes, what would we say? What were we saying? I'll come back. I believe for now you should just rest. Yes, I need to rest. But we must first arrange to meet. You are no less weary than I. Perhaps more so. Weariness is generous. <laughs> yes, indeed it is. I wonder how we would get on otherwise. But do we get on? One might ask oneself and perhaps reply that, on the whole, we get on fairly well? <laughs> yes, <laughs> we get on fairly well. How will, we, how will we manage to disappear? Well, it would suffice for us. No, it would not suffice. I asked you to come. Do you remember how things happened? I remember it very well. Oh, good. I was not very sure, finally, of having initiated the conversation myself. But how could I have come otherwise? Friendship would have saved you. I wrote to you, didn't I? On several occasions. But did I not also call you on the telephone? Certainly. Several times. I see you want to be gentle with me. I'm grateful. As a matter of fact, it's nothing new. The weariness is not greater, only it has taken another turn. It has several. I believe we know them all. It keeps us alive. It keeps us speaking. I would like to be able to state precisely when this happened. If only one of the characteristics of the thing did not make precision difficult. I can't help thinking of it. Well, then, we must think it together. Is it something that happened to you? Did I say that? Nothing that has happened. Nothing that has happened to me. Then, in my eyes, it's nothing serious. <laughs> I didn't say that it was serious. No, it's not serious. Well, if it's not serious, then talking about it cannot be either. I am not weary. I have no secret for you. You know this. It's just that I wasn't certain you would come. But I have never missed a single meeting. Indeed, you have been the truest friend. But tell me if you do not hesitate in coming. Now I might hesitate. But I came. Nothing else matters. Yes, you came. I don't know what's to become of me. But tell me, what has happened? What had to happen? Something that does not concern me. Did you want me to understand that this might concern me? 
It concerns neither one of us. This concerns neither one. This concerns no one. Is this what you wanted to tell me? I didn't want to. And still now I do not want to. Why do you not want to? You know very well. I feared compromising you. Well, now there is no place for that fear. Have we not, since we met, been engaged together, bound to lend assistance to one another as before the same arbiter? Engaged together? Engaged in the same discourse. True, but because of this also we must take heed. I am aware of my responsibilities. As I am also, with regard to you. You are. It would be unfriendly not to recognize it but only up to a certain point. You mean, in as much as we speak? That's right. Speaking is the last chance remaining for us. Speaking is our chance. You would not listen to me if I spoke. But I listen. I too listen. Well, what do you hear? You asked me to come so that we might talk about it. I asked you to come in order not to be alone in thinking about it. But I have never been alone since I have been thinking of it. I will never again be alone. I understand. Yes, you understand. You know I have been very weary for some time. You mustn't pay too much attention to what I might say. It is weariness that makes me speak. It is, at the very most, the truth of weariness. The truth of weariness, a weary truth. But weariness must not prevent you from having confidence in the one with whom you share this truth. You know very well that I have confidence in you. There is nothing else left to me. You mean that weariness perhaps also wears away the power to confide? It seems that, however weary you may be, you still accomplish your task, quite properly. One might even say that not only does weariness not impede the work, but the work demands this being weary, without measure. This is not only true of me, and yet, is it weariness or unwearying indifference to weariness? To be weary, to be indifferent, they are no doubt the same thing. Indifference then would be something like the meaning of weariness. It's truth. It's weary truth. Promise me you will not draw away too soon. I suppose I should have been concerned about this situation earlier. It seems to me that you have always attended to it. In a certain way that is true. But in this unceasing preoccupation there was the concern over not having attended to it earlier. He wanted me to speak. He found nothing to say. He alluded to his weariness, and he urged me to ask him questions. But to my surprise, I had to recognize that I had forgotten how to question. In order not to worry him, I told him that we were too close to question each other use usefully. Yes, too close. That's it. When you are there and we speak, I become aware that when you are not there, I am implicated in a speech that could be entirely exterior to me. And you would like to say it to me in order to not be implicated in it alone. But I am not alone in it. In a certain way, I am not in it. What is troubling you? The fact of being implicated in a speech that is exterior to me. If you were not there, I believe I could not bear the weariness. And yet I also contribute to it. That is true. You weary me very much. But precisely very much within human limits. Nevertheless, the danger is not averted. When you are there, I still hold on. I have the desire to spare you. I do not give up appearances entirely, 
this will not last long. I ask you then to go out of respect for weariness. I will go then. No, 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 don't leave yet. The thought came to me that the reason for your friendship, perhaps its sole reason, and I could never say enough how constant, how disinterested it is, is what is most particular to me, my privileged part. But can one become attached to a weary man and only by reason of his weariness? I don't ask that weariness be done away with. I ask to be led back to a region where it might be possible to be weary. Friendship is given only to life itself. But it is a question of my life, which I do not distinguish from weariness. The difference being that weariness constantly goes beyond the limits of life. <laughs>